In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to our service on this Wednesday morning in the season of Lent, coming from St. Christopher's Church in the parish of Luton, St. Anne with St. Christopher. I'm Reverend Anne and it is really good to welcome you here, whether it is your first time, whether you've been here many times, whether you come with particular needs on your heart today. Diane Scott, our Lay reader will be leading us in the first part of the service and will be leading us in our prayers of intercession this morning. If you would like to have a copy of today's service, the order of service can be found on a church near you, either the St. Anne's or the St. Christopher's page, and I encourage you to go there to download the order of service for the Holy Eucharist for Lent. Let's just pause for a moment and bring ourselves into God's presence to know his love for us this morning. Let us join together in our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. Let us confess our sins, remembering before God the times when we have fallen from temptation into sin. We have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you have been standing, I invite you to sit down now and hear our first reading from Holy Scripture, which is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, 
a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to stand as the gospel is proclaimed. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Blessed are those who have endured temptation. They have stood the test and will receive the crown of life. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowds were increasing, he began to say, This generation is an evil generation. It asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so the Son of Man will be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon and see something greater than Solomon is here. The people of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the proclamation of Jonah and see something greater than Jonah is here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A week ago, we began Lent. You may have taken on a challenge that will bring about change, something that will stretch you, something maybe that God has been nudging you to do, maybe something for your own well-being. You might not realize that this thing has become your mission, something that will, in the challenge, draw you closer into your relationship with God. Whether you have chosen to resist from doing something that hinders your relationship with God, or whether you have taken up something to draw you closer into God's presence, you are on a mission to give God the space to be heard and experienced, to enable a change to take place within you. You may have taken on your regular Lenten discipline of not eating crisps, sugar, chocolate, or having that nightly glass of something. This abstinence will help you to feel fitter and healthier. But if undertaken with a heart for other people, will draw you to reflect on the lives of those who have nothing to give up. It may well lead you to become more compassionate and caring for the needs of others. In some way, there will be a change taking place. It is in these disciplines that we continue our journey with God the mission he has set before us. Whether you have knowingly set out on your journey through Lent with the intention of growing closer to Jesus or simply giving up something for Lent, each of us has been called into the mission of God. Jonah is on a mission, one that he tried to avoid. Although Jonah is well known for being eaten by a big fish, We mustn't lose sight of the fact that Jonah has been given a very important job. St. Luke's Gospel, in there, Jesus reminded the crowd about Jonah. Now this took place immediately after Jesus has responded to a woman who yelled at him from the crowd, telling him how happy his mother is to have given birth to him. A very odd, out-of-the-blue statement. One to which Jesus responds by saying, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Making a faithful response is the change that Jesus says we need to make. To know Jesus as the Son of God. Hearing the words of God and being obedient to it. Jesus reminds the crowd about Jonah how eventually he became obedient to God's word and helped the people of Nineveh to change, to turn from the ways that were alien to God into God-fearing people, people who knew the love of God. Jesus was saying to the crowd, you know what Jonah did. I am greater than Jonah. Today, I have come to turn your wayward hearts into faithful hearts. Hearts that know the love of God, sorry, hearts that that know the love God has for you. Hearts that know that Jesus is the Son of God. Hearts that are obedient. Many in the crowd didn't recognize the message from God and ignored the signs and miracles. They missed seeing what was in front of their very eyes. Maybe the same can be said for us. We are on a mission this Lent, seeking to change something in us and in doing so, to change something about our relationship with Jesus. That we too may have 
an even deeper sense of God's love for us as his people, both corporately and as individuals, seeking to ensure that we don't miss, miss Jesus, his many signs and wonders. Jonah, as much as he argued with God, was called to go and to enable the people of Nineveh to change, to help them turn from their sin and to become righteous in the eyes of God. Jonah proclaimed the need for their repentance. He told them in words of one syllable what would happen if they didn't change their ways. God was intervening in the lives of those people. We might be able to understand why Jonah would be running away from God's directive. It probably felt quite scary. It wasn't unusual, after all, for prophets to be killed. And maybe Jonah thought his life was, more than, was worth more than to die because he was doing God's will. The conversion of the people of Nineveh was quite unexpected. They hadn't wanted to hear about God's judgment. Jonah fled from the task of preaching about repentance. He was afraid. But he needn't have worried, for when Jonah preached, the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast. They literally turned from their wrongdoing. And they were saved. They changed in an instant. Fasting and turning from evil were the result of their faith not the cause of it. They believed God. Their actions were the result of their change of heart. Receiving God's message transformed their lives. As we make changes in our lives this Lent, we give God space to change us. We, like Jonah, are invited to share God's message. Most of us are not asked to pack up our things and take on a long journey. And even if you are, you can't because of this pandemic. But any of us may be asked to help someone to begin their spiritual journey. Is God asking you to share with someone the difference having Jesus in your life makes to you? That may be the start of their change, the beginning of their journey to know God for themselves. Just because we continue to live lives with huge restrictions on our movements, God still has work for us. God kept nudging Jonah to go and enable the people of Nineveh to change, to become obedient to God. God is sending us, you and me, to the people yet to know him, to those who have turned away from God, to help them turn around. God invites us to walk alongside the people who need to know the difference knowing Jesus makes in your lives. Let us be ready to share, to encourage, to walk with those who are just realising that God loves them. Amen. God does indeed love us. 
as we commit ourselves this Lent to walk closer in his ways, I invite you now to stand and declare your faith in him. Let us declare our faith in him together as a fellowship in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so as we come to our time of intercessory prayer, I invite you to sit or maybe kneel as we bring our petitions before our Heavenly Father this morning, knowing that he hears our prayers. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Father. We pray for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, guide and strengthen her mission that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. As we remember this morning our brothers and sisters in the Anglican Communion, we ask your blessing upon the Diocese of Argyll and the Isles, part of the Scottish Episcopal Church. Those who lead, those who belong, and all the scattered communities that are served. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are young in the faith. For those who have newly encountered you during the pandemic. For those preparing formally for baptism and confirmation. As we pray for all who teach and nurture Remind us that the knowledge of your love has no end. Be among us at the parish Lent group this Thursday evening as we open ourselves to going deeper into our relationship with you. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the world. Just as we dare to hope that a safe relaxation of COVID restrictions in this country may be just around the corner. Remind us to value the freedoms that we enjoy and to use them wisely. We remember today the migrant workers of South Asia who feel that they have little choice but to seek, often dangerous, work abroad to support their families. We remember all those caught up in the escalating conflict in northern Mozambique as communities already displaced and suffering are now faced with a cholera outbreak. That a spirit of care, respect and reconciliation may grow among nations 
and people, we cry out. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. This Lent we pray for those whom we have injured or offended. Give us the humility to build bridges where there has been hurt. In our community, help us to work alongside those who promote friendship and unity in our town. With the Deanery of Luton, we pray today for our local MPs. Give them and all who have leadership responsibilities in Luton wisdom, resources and ability to promote fairness and flourishing in the difficult times that we face. May they serve in the interests of all with an eye to the poorest and those whose needs may be overlooked. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering today in mind, body or spirit. And name before you, loving Father, those for whom we have been asked to pray as a parish. For Daphne, Buki, Iris, Colin, Gibson, Diana, Jenny, Audrey, Viren, Ian, Grace, John, Isla and her family, Margaret, Michael, Jan, Pete, Mark, Maureen, Jeff, Diane, and any others known to us for whom we would like to pray now. Grant them all your comfort and healing, Heavenly Father. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. In communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Anne, St. Christopher, and all those who have walked in the way of holiness, we pray for those who have recently died. Margaret Woolley, Peter Wakeling, Eva O'Brien, Charles Waite, Nathaniel Oma Pariola, Marie Scrivener, Dennis Lack, and for those whose anniversaries fall at this time. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. God our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence, with prayer, fasting and generosity. Accept our Lenten discipline, and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so I invite you to stand as we come to share in the peace of Christ. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with one another the peace of Christ. as we come to our offertory hymn, I invite you to be generous in the work of God. Generous with your finances, but generous with your time, your gifts and your talents. 
that all may be used for the good of this parish, the work God has for us to do, that we may share in that ministry together. And so if you wish to give financially, there is a link on the top of the Facebook page or on our church near you. Otherwise, please make sure that your envelopes are put to one side, or if you have a little extra, that you make that donation. For all will be used for the good of the work of God in this place. God of wisdom, may the light of your eternal word, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, lead us in holiness and guide us to glory. We ask this in his name. Amen. With this bread that we bring, we, we shall sh remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for the body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his people we bring, to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. If you're able, please do stand for the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, 
to open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When, when we, we eat, eat this bread and drink, drink this cup, we, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Anne, St. Christopher, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not, not worthy, worthy to receive you, but, but only say the word, word and, and I shall be healed. And so we say together, Most, Most merciful Lord, Lord your, your love compels us to come in. in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. In a moment, I will receive the blessed sacrament, the body and blood of Christ on behalf of all gathered here. As I do so, I invite you to make your spiritual communion, that together we may know the mercy of God, the blessings of God, the love of God, to change us and to change our lives. For one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The body of Christ. blood of Christ.
And so let us pray, giving thanks for all that we have received from our Heavenly Father. Lord God, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it you nourish our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread. And enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we come now to our time of notices. So we will, as always, have our time of fellowship after the service. 12 o'clock will be our virtual refreshments. Tomorrow uh, evening, as Diane mentioned in our intercessions, we have the second step of our journey towards glory as we continue to study scripture together on our Lent course. It will either be from St. Mark's Gospel, St. John's Gospel, but there'll be other scripture in there as well. If you haven't asked for the codes yet, please do get in touch and ask for them. It's not too late to join. We have virtual refreshments again on Sunday. Uh, same time, same situation. You need Zoom codes. Um, and I've had a message from the priest out at St. Peter's where we have been sending the single bedding that we have been collected. As you know, we collected four boxes. That has come at a very timely time for a family of people who were asylum seekers who've been given that right to remain are just being rehoused. And there are four children in that family. And so each of them will have a set of bedding that has been donated by people in this parish. So thank you very much for your donations so far. That's just one family we've been able to help. There are so many more families in the town that need to be helped. So please don't think that's it. Please do continue to be generous. Likewise with the Luton Food Bank. We may not be having our food bank collections outside our churches at the moment, but hopefully that will soon be reinstated. But you can give a financial donation via the uh, food bank website, or if you are in the supermarket, do pick up a little bit extra and pop it in the trolley at the exit so that you can be supporting the needs of those in our town who are going without at this time. Anything else, Diane? Uh, I need people to look out for the video. Oh, yes. yes. If you've not already seen it, Diane, okay. put the new vi next video up. The uh, telling of the Easter Story Garden, that creation that we're being invited to do. If you've not seen it, I do encourage you to look at it. It's very good. It's scripturally based. It's prayerful. It gives us something to engage with, which enables us to build and create that story garden, that Easter story garden. So please do engage with that. And please do share it. If you're on Facebook, please do share the posts. It's a very easy way of enabling others to know what we're doing and to say to people, look, it's okay. Church is good. And so I think that is all the notices we have today. I will see some of you at virtual refreshments. And I hope to see more of you there very soon. So please do bow your heads to receive God's blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Amen. Amen.